Hey there. Hello. This is Bradley Sowash. Feeling rather ghoulish this morning for my October Improv Tip of the Month where we are going to talk about how to play scary music. Okay, I'm not going to leave this on the whole time because it's too scary and it hurts my nose because it sits on my glasses. So, here's the real deal. Bradley Sowash with Goofy Ears. Anyway, hello. I'm here to talk about how to improvise and play some scary music for Halloween. Here's how this happened. I started a blog earlier this week about how to play scary music. And it became very involved. And I wrote, uh, for two days I worked on that blog and wrote down all kinds of examples. And then I started to do arrangements of classical pieces, little um, arrangements that kids could play that seemed spooky and scary. And it got more and more involved, and I have all these ideas, and it turned into this massive blog, and it hit me, actually just about a half hour ago, that this is way too generous to give this all away. I've got at least three whole days of work into this. So I'm going to turn that into an e-book. Uh, I just want to start sort of simply with something that, that um, students can do, and um, this is just has to do with knowing your scales. So if you know the harmonic minor scale, um, I'm going to use A harmonic minor here. It's already creepy sounding. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, A. Of course, if we just play a scale, it's not so creepy. But it is a little creepy because there's a character to that scale that has a dark quality and has that odd raised seventh at the top. Just messing around with that scale, encouraging yourself or your student to, to pick up... Um, the notes of that scale, still play them in order, not even randomizing the notes, but just giving them um, some tiptoe quality, like pizzicato strings. Doop, 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 is a great way to get a kind of a, um, of a, of a creepy sound. So let's do that. Um, it might sound something like this. I'm going to play the same notes in both octaves. And instead of just running the scale, I'm going to make it sneaky. Big old E. Yeah, like a, it's nice to throw in some scary notes, right? Or scary surprises. And then I'll just come straight down. A little bit of a scale. And a tie. If you have a harpsichord sound, and most uh, digital pianos have a harpsichord sound, I'm just thinking how that might sound really nice on that too. Calls to mind, right? Lurch on the Adams family. So the harpsichord chord might be a nice sound. Anyway, the second idea is to take a harmonic minor scale, but play it over the primary chords, the one, four, and five. So in the key of A minor, um, which is the easiest key for piano players, that would be A minor, D minor, and E. Something like this. as a sort of a monkey trick. I can do it in another key. You know, it doesn't have any music to it. So I'm going to bring some music to it by giving it a little long and short feel. Long, short, long, short. And this little accompaniment pattern is one of the first accompaniment patterns that, are, that I teach in my Creative Chords Book 1, which is a book all in one piano method that um, you teaches chording along with uh, traditional reading skills. Um, anyway, so that's one of the first patterns I learned to be able to plug into chord symbols. All right, so we're going to take that, and on top of that, I'm going to play the harmonic minor scale. Now, here's the thing. If you're a trained musician, you're probably going to overthink this. You're going to say, well, I better start on a chord tone, and I better make it match the chord. Actually, not. Because we're sign, trying to sound kind of creepy and unexpected, it's, it's actually kind of nice if it doesn't fit the chord. So if I play an A minor chord down here low and I play a G sharp as my starting point, it's a very pretty dissonant and creepy sound. So the normal rules don't apply. It's better if you just wander around the, the uh, harmonic minor scale while maintaining chords in your left hand. use a note that is not in this chord. Okay, 
so just the first idea is just scales alone, and the second idea is to just go ahead and put those harmonic chords under there. You can drag it out a little bit slower. So the harmonic minor has a, a sort of solemnity or profundity to it that gives us this feeling like we must be a genius for playing such heavy, deep, dark music, right? So I hook into that, and um, it, it gives this gives you probably more more credit than we deserve. All right, so the first two tips were hit the harmonic minor scale as a scale, and then the second tip was to add primary chords to that. Now we're going to go to a new place. The third tip, take an innocent, lovely song that everybody cherishes and make it minor. So it seems obvious, but listen how it changes things. It's sort of like it ruins that childhood innocence about the tune, and I really don't like creepy clowns. They really bother me. I hate mean-looking clowns. It just freaks me out. And so this has kind of works for the same reason. Uh, creepy clowns are work because it's innocence becoming darkened. So I'll show you how we can do that. We can just simply take Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and we'll do it in minor key. I'm going to play that in a harmonic minor, meaning that all my Bs will be natural. Um, so let's, let's listen to this. I'm also going to give it a little feeling. So it really creeps me out. And you might choose a scary sound. Organ, harpsichord. Now, because I'm an um, a, a improviser, one of the places to start with improvisation with a student is to do some ornamentation. So I can't resist encouraging you to um, throw some extra notes, some in-between notes, repeat some notes, play neighbor tones, things like that. they're playing this creepy Halloween version to, to explore it. It's a folk song. Anybody can do whatever they like with this. Nobody owns it. Fill notes. Escape tones. Uh, let's do a long trill here. Let's play that. Okay, so, you know, it's obvious, but it works really well. Now, if you want to get even creepier, my fourth tip is to minorize a, an innocent tune, but not all the way. It's even weirder and creepier if you take what is expected and then bend it like everything's really nice, but there's a sinister underpinning. And let me give you an example that I wrote this out. This time I did an Alberti bass on this um, um, twinkle variation. So it starts out easily enough. I put a little pause in there to regroup. Now, listen what happens in the next measure. Oh no! Oh! Things are good again! Ah. I just mixed the major and minor chords, for the, and um, it was fun to to decide which ones would be major and which ones would be minor, and you adjust the melody accordingly. You can just play around, take a version of Twinkle or, or This Old Man or, or um, you know just any easy folk song, and um, and make some chords minor, but not all of them. And it becomes an interesting exercise about which ones to make minor and which ones to leave major as you blend into that weirder version, and. Um, I don't know why some work better than others. Yesterday I had a very a little bit different version of that. I just showed it to my daughter who stopped by, my adult daughter. She said, I don't like that one measure. I think and so I reversed some of the majors and made a minor, some of the minors became major, and then it worked. Why? I don't know. But um, so it could be a fun little exercise to be both half major and half minor. But one of the things that gives that makes music uh, scary is is if you use appropriate chords and progressions. So the big cliche of a of a 
scary chord, if you just need a quick joke, you know, is just to play a, either a diminished chord or better, a diminished seven. So I'll play C, E flat, F sharp, and A. Um, and you can argue with me all day about why I spell it that way, but that's the way I'm going to spell it. So, and if you just rock that, it's immediately silent movie time. You know, with the damsel tied to the railroad track and the, the black-hatted man twirling his, um, you know, handlebar mustache. And she's saying, I can't pay the rent, but you must pay the rent. And if you move those, those diminished chords around, I'll go up a half step. It builds tension, right? Remember, it may be news to some of you that, um, you know, diminished chords, there are only three of them. Because C diminished seven is the first, C sharp diminished seven is the second, and the third one is D diminished seven, and then if you go to an E flat diminished seven, that's just the C diminished seven in an inversion. So you only have to know three of those shapes, and you can just wiggle them around with tremolos. I mean, this is corny stuff, but it's it's uh, really you know fun for, for for kiddos, right? We leave our sophistication behind when we're, when we're getting kids. We want to have fun. I mean, this is corny too, right? Those sort of Liberace runs, or, or this is corny. But it's not corny when you're 10 years old. It's really cool. I'll look what I can do. So keep that in mind. Okay, now, another thing about chords, just to play around with, is if, if you take chords and you um, put together minor chords that are not in the same key. In other words, just grab some minor chords, but make sure they do not conform to the same key signature. So an ordinary key signature, let's say we're in a major key. The two, three, and six chords are minor. So in the key of C, D minor, E minor, and A minor are, are inherent to that key. But if you would deliberately choose chords that are not in the same key, it, it is uh, unexpected and odd. So let's say uh, if I play an A minor, and I can also name any other minor chord. Let's go, I'm just going to take a guess, E flat minor. Try tone away, and it's just really creepy um, because it's an odd interval. Let's do A minor and um, C sharp minor. So as long as the two minor chords are not in the same key, it's going to sound creepy. Then you give it some attitude with a, a rumbling bass. Yeah, and I played an F sharp major there by mistake. Sometimes that works too. Yeah, it's just a simple trick. A lot of this stuff's simple. Here's a great example of someone who did this and made a, a whole lot of recognition. It'll last for 100 years. So in Star Wars, the, they call it the... What is it called? I wrote it down here. Anyway, I call it the Darth Vader theme, but it's actually called the um, Imperial March. There we go. So why does that work? Okay, another thing is to, and I'll show you one other example, is to use um, chromatic systems. Take a chord, and in the in-between chords can actually be major or minor. And just moving chords around. And then, of course, the famous version of that is um, the Andrew Lloyd Webber's Phantom of the Opera. You better do that on organ. So um, the reason that works is for the same reason as the other chords. You don't have any chords in any key that are chromatic continually. We might have a few half steps apart. So when you leave the key and put chords together that are random or don't belong together, then you get um, a really uh, creepy sound. So that's, that's, my, that's my tip there. And then the last thing I want to do is touch on some classical quotes and break them down. I just want to point out, everybody should know this lick. It's associated with creepy music. Sorry, Bach, it just is. And let's break it down. So I'm going to go to organ here. It's a D minor. D, F, A. I'm going to go down and show my keyboard, I guess. Let's see. Does that work? Um, hard to read a keyboard sideways, but it's a D, F, A. There's A. Little neighbor tone. And then it's a harmonic minor. So... It's based on the harmonic minor. Bach knew this was a cool sound. 
So everybody should just know that, because it's a fun quote to throw into your playing. Um, and then you do it down an octave and double it with your left hand. And you can just do this again. What he actually wrote was... But if that's hard to remember, just do the lick twice. Nobody's going to care while they're asking for trick or treat. Anyhow, uh, whatever. And then he does something really clever. What he does is he runs a diminished chord. Um, it's just a C sharp diminished chord. C sharp, E, G, B flat. So you can imitate this. In other words, take the principle, not the music. And he plays the tonic note in the left hand. So we have a D. We're in the key of D. But he runs that C sharp diminished, which fights the D. to do after that, just doodle around in harmonic minor. So it sounds Bachish, um, and it gets the, 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 the creepiness of that without having to learn that whole piece. And, and, um, so that's a fun one. Another one just to throw out there is um, the Funeral March. Let's go back to piano. Uh. I wonder if John Williams was thinking of that. I, I, I bet you that was his inspiration. I just noticed that. Anyway, an easy way to play that in the left hand is to just play um, in B flat minor. It doesn't matter the key. Um, you're going to play a root and a fifth and then a root and a sixth. Kind of like boogie. boogie pattern, but we're going to do this in B flat minor. And this is lots easier than playing Chopin's. Okay? And then um, another one is the Hall of the Mountain King. Pick up a key, I'll do B minor here, and just go straight up the pentascale. scale. Could be any key. And then come down with those last two notes chromatically. So, um, Last two notes were D and F sharp, come down to D flat F, or F D flat, and the E and C. So that's almost enough just to get the fun out of it. Uh, what is that? I guess that's it. Yeah, and it goes on from there. So when I was a kid, I was the youngest brother. I have two older brothers who were music lovers and arty people. And when mom and dad would leave on their Friday night outing, they'd say, yeah, you'd be good boys, okay. You know, and it's wintertime, it's dark early, and, they, and they'd go off. And the second the guitar would go out of the driveway, this happened so many nights, they pulled out an album that we had of um, Wagner. And on the cover of that album was Fire. And, 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 and they, you know, I'm a, what, six, seven-year-old, and they, and they, and they said, they're going to play this, and they put on that, dun, 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 and chased me around the house, and, uh, and then it was fun for a while, but then I'd get more and more scared, because they turned the lights on and off, and, then, and I'd say, stop, and being brothers, they didn't, and he scared the bejeebers out of me, until it would <laughs> almost always end with me on the floor, crying in a puddle of, of complete terror, and then everything would switch. Oh, no, we went too far. Bradley, little Bradley, um, here, you want some cookies? Now, don't tell Mom and Dad about this. You know, we were just having fun. We, we love you. And, um, and <laughs> so to this day, um, when I hear that particular bit of Wagner, it just gives me chills. I, like, I, you know, it's hard to like. Um, but, boy, music's a powerful thing. It would just terrify me. Um, I think we wore that record out. Until next time, enjoy your creative music-making journey.